Hello everyone and welcome to today's session of Computer Organization and Architecture. So today we will learn about the Associative Memory Mapping Technique. We will try and understand the emergence and the need of this technique as a continuation to our last discussion. So let's get to learning. Now we have already seen how conflict miss became an inevitable problem for the last memory mapping technique. Well to be fair enough, it basically just knocked out direct memory mapping. And that happened due to the assignment of multiple main memory blocks to single cache lines. But before looking for the solution to it, let's first understand different types of misses. Yes, you heard me right, there are quite a few of them. Fortunately, we have already witnessed two of the cache miss types in one of our previous sessions. If you remember this gate previous year question, here during the first iteration, all the 40 block requests were misses. And these are called compulsory misses. By definition, a compulsory miss or a cold miss occur when a memory block is referenced for the very first time. These cannot be avoided unless the block has been prefetched. However, increasing the block size up to a certain extent can reduce the number of these misses exploiting the spatial locality principle. Now I hope you remember the second iteration as well. During the second iteration, we actually encountered 16 misses. These are known as conflict misses. Now conflict miss occur when we refer to the words that got evicted from the cache. That means the information was present inside the cache previously but got replaced by some other information during the course of execution. Like the blocks B0 to B7 was there inside the cache during the first iteration but got replaced in order to make space for the blocks B32 to B39 within that iteration only. Later, during the second iteration, we were again in need of those blocks. Similarly, during the second iteration itself, we again required the blocks B32 to B39. But this time, all these were conflict misses. For your information, conflict miss is also known as collision miss or interference miss. The third type of misses are called capacity misses. A capacity miss occurs due to the limited size of the cache, not due to the mapping principle being implemented. The data currently important for the computation is usually called working set. And when a working set is bigger than the cache itself, these misses occur frequently. Now all these type of cache misses are popularly known as 3 C's. And amongst them, the capacity miss is the hardest to identify. Now apart from these, few more cache misses are there like coherence misses, coverage misses and system related misses. We will learn about the coherence and the coverage misses in a different session where we will discuss about the cache coherence problems. And regarding the system related misses, I promise to provide a brief insight later. For now, let's observe how the conflict miss problem can be resolved. The solution to direct mapping's conflict miss problem is associative mapping. And in associative mapping, there are no restrictions regarding the mapping technique. What am I trying to mean is any block can be assigned to any of the cache lines. Yes, and for this technique, the PA bits are split as tag bits and block or line offset. Basically, the entire block number bits are used as tags. That's why it's also called fully associative mapping. That is, the main memory blocks can be associated to any of the cache lines. Also, that is the reason why the PA split doesn't specify any set of bits for the line numbers. However, this leads to another disadvantage. As associative mapping follows many-to-many -many relationship, there is no clue where a particular memory block is placed inside the cache. During retrieval, all the tags associated to all the cache lines are judged to find out the sort block. This is going to increase the heat latency. Nonetheless, having as many comparators as the cache lines working in parallel can be a solution 
but it won't be an effective one as this would increase the hardware cost exponentially. This implementation would also increase the heat within the circuitry as well. Anyway, for now, let's work with this. Let's now observe the conceptual hardware implementation as well. Assuming there are 4 lines in the cache, suppose the generated physical address is of 8 bits and the least significant 2 bits of the PA is the offset. Therefore, the remaining 6 bits are going to be used as block numbers. Also now we know that in fully associative mapping, the block number bits are used as tag bits. So all the 4 lines will be connected to a 6 bit comparator each. To which the tag bits of the physical address will be fed parallelly. Now the outputs of the comparators will be given as input to a multi-input OR gate so that it can indicate the cache hit if any of the lines have the required block. And worry not, only one of the cache line is going to have the block if that is present in the cache in the first place. Cache is very expensive and limited in size. So having more than one copy of the same data is not really a smart way to utilize it. Then again, one might argue that why use OR gate? It would be efficient to use XOR gate in this scenario. Well, you are absolutely correct. But the price of a multi-input XOR gate would definitely be more than that of multi-input OR gate. And we already spent too much on the comparators, didn't we? So for this organization, the hit latency would be time taken by a single comparator as all of them are working in parallel, that is, T comparator, plus the delay due to the OR gate, signified by TR. So this was the hardware implementation of associative mapping concept. Suppose these informations are given and they are asking us about the hit latency. Let's try to solve it, shall we? Now the main memory size is given as 2 gigabytes, which is 2 to the power 1 because of 2 and 1 gigs is nothing but 2 to the power 30, which sums up to 2 to the power 31 in terms of bytes. Now assuming the memory to be a byte addressable memory, we can figure out the number of PA bits which is nothing but 31. Now the block size is given as 2 kilobytes which is 2 to the power 11 in terms of byte because 2 is 2 to the power 1 like earlier and kilobyte is 2 to the power 10 which sums up to 2 to the power 11 bytes. Therefore the offset is going to be 11 bits. Now we can easily figure out the number of tag bits subtracting the block offset bits from the physical address bits which is 20 bits. So 20 bits are going to be used as tag bits. Now the comparator delay has been given as 15 n nanoseconds and we already know this n signifies the number of tag bits. Therefore the hit latency we can calculate as 15 multiplied by 20 where 15 is coming from the 15 n and 20 is nothing but the number of tag bits which we calculated earlier. Now here we must remember that we are dealing with fully associative memory mapping technique. Therefore, the delay of the multi-input OR gate will have to be considered as well. So the hit latency altogether will be 15 multiplied by 20 plus 7 because that is the delay of the multi-input OR gate, which results in 307 nanoseconds and that is the answer to our question. So these are the type of numerical questions that are likely to come in competitive examinations and it's my recommendation that you should always remember the key concepts so that we don't really miss out on important parameters while solving them. So that was all for this session. We today learnt about various types of cache misses, tried to resolve the conflict miss problem of direct mapping and witnessed how associative or fully associative mapping technique emerged. Also, eventually we saw how to calculate hit latency in case of a fully associative cache. So I hope to see you in the next one where we will solve numerical problems related to associative memory mapping technique. Thank you all for watching.